This is component three, Mark, and this is paper three. And we've got a, a great diagram here. You might not be able to see it too well, uh, but you'll have your paper in front of you. A diameter, total diameter, total volume, and all sorts of other stuff. What's going on here? We're trying to show you on this. We've got the heart at this side and back to the heart. And we start off in the aorta, you know, arteries, and then we've got capillaries and say, you know, muscles or whatever. Then blood is moving back to the heart. And this is the vena cava. So this is the the left. Now starting off at the left side and then back into the right side of the heart, the systemic circulation or circulation to the body. And as we go through the various vessels, we've got a representation of the data on a graph and we've got some numbers as well. We don't really need the numbers. We've just got this, this representation here. It's a bit like... Uh, a bit like the kite diagrams that we, we had in math skills, whatever. And the same thing, allowing different things to be shown on one, one graph. Using only information in the diagram, so only what we can see, give two ways, one, two, in which the capillaries are adapted for the function of gas exchange capillaries. And we need to go right, where are the capillaries? Right, that's where our capillaries are. And we need to look at the data we've got. So for the capillaries, we've got a large number. So it's got the biggest number of them, as represented there. We've got the smallest diameter, so thinnest. We've got the largest cross-sectional area and the vo total volume doesn't really say what the term volume of blood presumably it doesn't really say okay so that, that's the information that we've got and now you need your knowledge of exchanging the capillaries to pick out the things that you want to say here so for example I would start off with a diameter with them being very small, and that will help with diffusion. So, I'm going to go for a small diameter. And I'm saying the thing that is in the graph, so there can't be any, any confusion. You know, and for example, that would you know, reduce the pressure, slow the blood down, and you know, the diffusion distance um, would be less between that and the tissues. Okay, and you know, let's let's just start off at the top. There's more of them, so there's a large number of them. Large number of them. It's not really wanting you to explain anything. It just says give two ways. It's just testing whether you can you know, use your AO2 skills in, in kind of reading the information in a slightly different format. Other things we could say, large surface area. This uh, large surface area, possibly from this, this diagram here in contact or the total cross-sectional area being being large. But I've, got, I've gone for the what I think are the two most obvious answers there. So just why is there no exchange between the blood in the arteries, arterioles, venules and veins with the tissues? So arteries and arterioles, where are we here? So we're talking these here and and of these here. Why is there no exchange between that and the tissues? Well, here we can see, well, you know, we're starting off with one tube and then we're only going to 
a few more tubes. We've got the diameter. These are big, big tubes, in, certainly in comparison with the capillaries. And that could be that could be a problem. So the thing that, the thing that we'll, we'll go for is that these are big tubes with thick walls and, and, and diffusion doesn't stand a chance of going over that kind of thick wall distance. So we'll go for thick walls. Now, impermeable. So they're not like the capillaries with capillary pores in and so on. Uh, they're just you know, basically tubes to transport blood from one place to another. In what type of blood vessels is the maximum amount of blood? A bit of a naughty, uh, a bit of a naughty word that amount. But they're trying to avoid telling you what the answer is. Um, amount, well, we'll read total volume uh, for that and so we'll have equals amount there this is a very general word but in chemistry it means you know number of amount of substance you know in, in moles so there's a uh, the peak of our amountness and we need to go uh, where where are we up here well it's that line there is sort of there. So we're going to go for whatever this says. Major Venus branches. That would be a good uh, Major Venus branches. And possibly, you know, large, large veins there. So, um, veins or, or is it large veins or major Venus branches not that I can spell it so just saying what you see there and yeah you know, veins there are well developed circular muscles in the walls of arteries so arteries have got a small smaller lumen and then the actual thickness of the wall might be like that compared to veins that would be more like that. Or capillaries are yeah, be less than that size. And in here you've got your various layers there. But it's saying there's well developed circular muscles. So circular muscles. So circular muscles, as the name suggests, are in a circle. And so circular muscles can contract. That's the only thing a muscle can do is contract and so it makes the lumen you know, smaller. That, that's, what, that's what it can do. Or it can withstand, you know, contract to withstand the tube becoming bigger if there's a big pressure of something in the tube. So that's what circular muscles can do. Longitudinal muscles would go, you know, if you had the other view, along, you know, in this one, forwards and backwards. Um, but circular muscles there, what, what do they do? And you know about the function of the muscle and elastic tissue and so on uh, to withstand this big pressure when the heart is beating the ventricle muscle contracts, forces blood into the aorta and arteries and this needs to prevent you know, the expansion, the over expansion of, of this vessel. So resists you know the dilation you know caused by that ventricular systole so what do the muscles do well they contract and uh, prevent to prevent i can't spell prevent prevent dilation so um, at ventricular Systole, and you know that equals, you know, withstand the pressure. Why didn't I just say that? Withstand the pressure. Contractor withstand the pressure, and also 
Uh, what they can do is, uh, if you go outside for a snowball fight, um, you'll soon find your hands are very numb, because your, your body is getting very cold. And uh, wh why isn't my body sending this nice warm blood to my hands anymore? Well, your body is trying to uh, maintain the, the heat of your internal organs and uh, your hands are slightly more dispensable. And you've got a system where these arterioles can contract to reduce the blood flow or relax to, to you know, allow more blood flow. And the, the names of the you know, vaso you know, constriction or you know, dilation. Uh, so that's going to be our nice posh word there. So vaso constriction. You know, to regulate the, you know, to regulate the blood flow in that particular artery. Oh, and we're at the end there. So it's quite a lot of work actually, uh, just for six marks.